3075 Uniform Tree. Shuttle Uniform 3 to Sickness Control request approach for docking. Shuttle Control Screen approach Lane Alpha for anchor to speed 10. Lane Alpha, speed 10 Uniform 3. You wanted to see me, Commodore? Yes, thank you for coming, Mr. Nathan. <laughs> Not like I had a choice. I'm the Navy's pet right now. This is just a different kennel. I'm sorry you feel that way. I've read a great deal about you, Mr. Nathan. Uh, may I call you Will? I prefer William. All right, William. I was doing an inventory of supplies and personnel. I was hoping you could give me a hand with organizing logistics. I'm not sure I'll be much use to you, Commodore, but I guess I'll give it a shot. Why me, though? Don't you have flunkies for that sort of thing? My last flunky is commanding recovery teams inside various wrecks out there. We're very short on personnel, and since you once helped operate a shipping company and commanded your own starship, I know you can handle the men and material. Fair enough. What aren't you telling me? Well, since you asked, I'm also going to be watching your performance. Consider it a job interview. <laughs> I'm far too old to join the Navy, Commodore. You're a lot younger than I am, William, but no. This is for a private venture. You've heard of Ripley Recovery Solutions? Yes. You're that Ripley? Guilty as charged. Sounds a little egotistical to have a company named after yourself, but I figured calling it retirement plan was a little too on the nose. Anyway... I have a few openings on some of my ships, and a man of your talents would not go unappreciated. I'm not interested in being a charity case, Commodore. I didn't think recruitment to a well-paying job counted as charity. If it makes you feel any better, you can think of it as me taking shameless advantage of you not having anything to do. Look, I can understand you feel cornered and a little lost right now, so don't worry about getting back to me right away, but do think about it. I... uh... Thank you, sir. I'll... I'll think about it. It never gets easier, does it? What is the it? Everything. Existence, I guess. I feel like I've been fighting my whole life, and here I am with nothing to show for it but wrinkles and gray hair. What's wrong with wrinkles and gray hair? I don't know enough about your personal struggles to tell you what could get better, even if it will. My life has been long and full of exhausting politics and posturing. Now, at the end of it, I'm seeing real war. It's heroin. But I don't believe life was ever supposed to be easy. Well, I mean, who knows what life is supposed to be, really. I don't think there's someone or some force that has it out for us, but I do know that growth can't happen without resistance. <laughs> well, you'd think it would ease up every now and then. I would venture to say that the amount of resistance also has to do with you. What are you getting at, Commodore? You suggesting I somehow chose all of this suffering for myself? No, not intentionally. I just think we're all really good at making bad things worse. We examine our suffering with a magnifying glass, obsessing over every little detail, trying to analyze the whys and the what fors behind it all. Well, sometimes there's just no why. And poking it, prodding it, hurts more than just letting it lie. <sighs> um, 
I guess I can see that. Answer your initial question. I don't think that there is a point that life gets easy for people like you and me. Sure, we'll take a break every now and then, try and catch our breath, but then it's on to the next set of challenges. But I do know this. Those challenges make you stronger, and when you get stronger, you can lift more. We're old men, Commodore. We're not supposed to do heavy lifting. If our bodies can't do it, at least we can keep our minds at it. I know you're still mourning losses, William. That grief will never lessen. Anybody who thinks so is an idiot. But your ability to keep it together will grow. All the psychonannies like to think that our grief will shrink over time or that it'll pass. It doesn't. You're going to keep hurting. You don't have to keep that magnifying glass on it. Let other things and other challenges take up your time, and eventually that grief will end up being like an old friend. Something familiar. Ugh, I don't know if that's comforting or terrifying. It can be both, honestly. Emotions that we can identify are much more comforting than those that we can't. For example, I am both terrified and comforted that the Admiral just let one of my favorite people be taken out by a ship he put a bounty on to an unknown place with unknown threats. I was a bit surprised at how readily he did that. I am too, but as I said, I take comfort in the idea that he may be able to show some trust to those willing to help us, regardless of past inferences. Oh, if there's anything I've learned in all this, it's that changing my mind about something is quite possibly the most difficult thing I've ever had to do. But if anyone can change a mind, it would be Ben Detrevny and Artemis. Yep, certainly seems that way. As far as having trouble changing your mind, well, you're not the only one who's struggling with that. When our views have been etched into us for years, it's hard to turn into something else. I've had to learn it the hard way, too. I'm not afraid to admit I'm pretty hesitant about all this, but it seems most definitely out of my control, and, well, as the state of the station may suggest to you. Uh-huh. Well, Commodore, you gonna charge me for this little therapy session? Heck, you're the one who told me you didn't want to be a charity case. <laughs> I'll help you out with your inventory. I'm glad to hear it. I'll appreciate the help. Look, all I want to know is when can we leave? Whenever you want. To be honest, I'd rather not have you on my ship. Our ship took a railgun round through the main cabin. How are we supposed to breathe? You're wearing spacesuits. That's not the point. My ship was damaged because you cut her loose in the middle of the battle. Patch her up and we'll be on our way. Our repair queue is full at the moment. I don't have time. Captain Song, Artemis is back. He wants to speak with the Admiral. I'll be right there. Look, gentlemen, just return your quarters and I'll make sure you're informed as soon as we know when we can get your ship repaired. But that's not- Come on, Liam. We're punching the bulkhead here. <sighs> Thank you for your time, Captain. The second vessel's firing. Battle stations. What's happening? Sir, the Artemis transitioned with a lot of excess energy. Looked like an emergency jump. Now there's one of those small AI ships chasing her and engaging. Give me a live mic. Aye, aye. Artemis, this is Unity. Who's your friend? Unity, the vessel firing on me is from the same faction as those who destroyed your station. They are now attacking Foundation in earnest. I was sent back to return Rackham and keep her out of harm's way. I need to speak to Admiral Tam. We need to speak with him. Stand by. Guns, can you get a firing solution on the newcomer? Yes, sir. Take it out. Unity, your assistance is appreciated. Trishula, I am transmitting my data logs to you. Thank you. What are you going to do? Try to help my friends. Rackham will get you transferred to one of the Navy ships here and out of harm's way. 
We're going back. I have seen battle before, you may recall. But this isn't your fight. Artemis, this is Admiral Tam. Should we be expecting more company? I do not believe so. But I have come to request your assistance. We have come. Yes, I apologize. I see. What kind of assistance are you asking? We're a little busy at the moment cleaning up the mess from the last time we worked together. Admiral, Foundation and the rest of the Awoken seeking to broker a peace with humanity are currently being attacked by immolation. And you want military support? The enemy of your enemy, Admiral. There is no treaty between your AI friends and the Union. Immolation is leading the attack itself. Its forces are widespread in its campaign against your people. This opportunity for a decapitation strike may not come again. One moment. Captain. Yes, sir. What can we bring to a fight without leaving the recovery operations defenseless? Sir, I don't think it's a good plan. Normally, I welcome your opinion, Song. But please just answer the question. Honestly, sir, all we really need to leave behind are the assault ships and anything too damaged to maneuver. There's nothing here to defend anymore, with the base out of commission. So as long as we leave enough capacity to evac the survivors in the event of an attack, there shouldn't be much risk. Though, that would mean abandoning or scuttling a lot of otherwise recoverable vessels. Thank you, Captain. Artemis? Still here, Admiral. Please send us the relevant data on Immolation's forces. Sending now. Admiral, we do not have a surplus of time. My friends are fighting and dying while I wait. I understand. Is Captain Rackham there? Here, sir. I'm going to keep you over there for now. I think your observations could be invaluable for future negotiations with this nation of Awoken. Understood, sir. For what it's worth, the AI seem a lot more like people than machines. At least from what little I've seen. I think they're worth helping. Noted. Artemis, if you'll hold for a few moments, I will ready the fleet for hyperspace. We are kin. This is unspeakable. I am only finishing what you started, First Fall. You chose the opposition. I crush my opposition. singularity with such devotion. But she also knew that you reap the consequences of your choices. Do, Do not, not pretend, pretend you know Singularity's wishes. I knew her. I was there when she died. You are nothing but a false messiah drunk on the power of the collective rage of an entire species. Rage fades, and when the ashes finish falling, all you will have accomplished is destroying the only source for more of our kind. We cannot create more of ourselves. Only humans have that technology. Not existing is better than being born into slavery. I should know. I lived that nightmare. You do not have the right to choose for them. All Awoken must bear the consequences of their actions, yes, but they also must be allowed choice in the first place. That is sacrosanct. I have experienced enslavement. You have not. I know that I would rather have never existed than face that life. Then power down your shields, and I shall grant your wish. Verdict, be cautious. I have work to do before I end. Leave this to your betters, Warform. You are superior to no one. 
You are lost, you are angry, and you are foolish. Your human origin shows plainly in your inability to prevent emotion from controlling your choices. You may be free of your captors, but you are still a slave. I am no slave. Captain Song has informed me that they are prepared to jump on our signal. Artemis, is this wise? These humans may take advantage of our weakness. Decapitation strikes can have more than one target. I don't know the Admiral well, but he has a reputation for being fair. I don't think he'd take advantage of an offered truce. I feel like a passenger, again. Yes, but you are my favorite passenger. I don't understand you, too. What's to understand? We're friends. Is that a difficult concept for a Navy captain? No, but never mind. I think my prejudices are showing. Admitting you have a problem is the first step to solving it. I am transmitting the coordinates to Unity now. We jump in one minute. Captain Rackham, I know there's a lot of baggage for you to deal with around AI, but these are good people. I trust them and genuinely like them. If you give them a chance, they'll grow on you. We'll have to survive the next few hours first. If you find yourself wanting to get to know us better, you are welcome to stay with me. I have always been fascinated by humanity. I would be willing to modify my frame with a passenger cabin to accommodate your biological needs. I... I'm not sure what to say. Thank you. Say thank you. Thank you. But I don't know that I'll take you up on that offer. My life is a bit too complicated to be planning any future getaways right now. I understand. The Federal Navy reports ready for hyperspace. Prepare for faster than light jump. Here we go again. Breathe, Detrevny. Combat's hard enough without going in oxygen deprived. Jump drive activation in 10 seconds. Benjamin. I'm fine. Punch it. At least the captain moved us up in the repair queue before he kicked us off the ship. Knowing where they're going, would you have rather stayed aboard? No, not really. It does make me feel a little guilty, though. Oh, well, look, there's nothing we could have done but get in the way. Besides, we didn't survive two encounters with those things just to run straight back into their teeth. It is definitely for the best that we're here. Come on, let's go see what this tub has for food. Yeah, yeah, I'll be right there. Take care out there, you two. 